through. So briefly, my name is Wendy Curtin. I am, I actually work for the National Service Center for the Boy Scouts of America. Um, started to work for scouting right out of college. Um, knew that I wanted to work with youth programming. Um, thought I wanted to be a teacher, but didn't want to be tied to a classroom all day. Um, started thinking about, okay, well, what else can I do? Um, as Cindy mentioned, I grew up doing Girl Scouts, um, oddly enough, and um, earned my gold award, um, as did Cindy, um, and wanted to be and have an impact in our community and to offer kids the same experience that we had, uh, which was amazing. Um, and I see so many youth that need that and thrive from that. So that's what, a little bit of why I asked out. And like Cindy, I always said that if I had um, a boy or a girl, either one, um, they would do scouts. Um, had a son first, um, he's in scouts and he is about 98% almost the eagle. So Yay! if I don't strangle him first, <laughs> finishing that. Um, he actually had his project planned out and was supposed to do it on April the 13th and then COVID hit and that's kind of derailed a few things but that's okay. Um, later had a daughter um, and kind of knew that things were going to change and girls were going to be um, welcomed into the Cub Scout program um, and it just it really impacted me the day that we crossed my son over from the pack to the troop and my husband was in uniform and I was in uniform and my son was in uniform and my daughter looked at me and said well why don't I have a uniform and I was like oh come on Cub Scouts <laughs> you know get there let's get this done so I'm happy to now be um, a den leader for her den um, which is a multi-ranked den and this past year has been extremely challenging um, because I had um, wolves, bears, and um, weeblows. So it's a little bit of a stretch. Um, I am kind of thankful that I have not had to have tigers and lions because that just adds another mix to the layer. But I'm gonna just give you some tips and tricks of what I've done. This by no means is a rocket science thing or what, you know, me as a national person would be telling you to do, just my own personal experience as a den leader. Um, and I would love to hear what you're doing and how we might, you know, work together on some stuff uh, and share our ideas. I will tell you that there, there is a Cub Scout committee that is reviewing the adventures right now. Um, they are going to be tweaking some of the adventures and they are gonna make it way easier on us as leaders that have multi-ranked dens because they are gonna give us a character kind of trait um, that you can follow that will be across every single rank. Um, so it will help tie some of the stuff together a whole lot better than what it is. So be looking for that like sooner rather than later. Um, probably we'll launch like May, 2021. So next May. So, well, let's talk about today. <laughs> So um, I by no means want this to be um, just a one-sided conversation. So if there's something that you want to add to the conversation, just unmute yourself, jump in, um, totally open. And I love it when people get involved. So it makes me feel like I'm not being a teacher and us sharing ideas together. So, so what does being a leader mean um, to you? It doesn't mean that it's just a one-size-fits-all solution. Um, you're going to have to tweak everything. You're going to have to change. Um, it doesn't mean that you are really good at your job or you want to be well-liked um, or that you have to be the person in charge. Um, it just means that you're going to inspire others to do their best. So, and by doing that and being a great leader, you're going to be resilient, flexible, which all of you are flexible. Um, You've already proven that by having a multi-rank den and being willing to take that task on. Um, number one, it's not easy to be the leader. Number two, it's not easy to be the leader of a multi-rank den. Um, and number three, it's definitely not easy doing this during COVID. <laughs> um, you know, trying to figure out, do I do virtual? Do I do in person? How do I, you know, make sure all this stuff works? Um, but communication is the key. 
um, being open with your families of like, okay, this is how we're gonna roll. Things may be a little chaotic. Things don't always flow exactly right, but we're gonna do our best. And that's why I tell everyone, follow that Cub Scout motto to the T, do your best. Make it fun, make it exciting. Um, your kids don't know what the advancements are for each of the different ranks. They just know that they're coming to Scouts, they're gonna hang out with their friends, and they're gonna have fun. The less that we make it, um, like, okay, you have to do step one, step two, step three. Um, they don't wanna do that. They've done that all day long. So make it exciting for them. Um, be there, be responsible. So this is your kind of your, your board of all the things that you've got to make sure that happen. Um, it is a plug and play. Um, and I'm gonna tell you here in just a minute on the next slide of kind of how I do all of this. Some things you're gonna complete exactly to the T and other things you're not. Um, if you feel that the kids are understanding the concept or that they have worked on the achievement either through school or other activities that they're involved with and you feel that they have a um, comprehension comprehension of that achievement I have always been of the mindset that I'm going to sign them off on it um, and people kind of cringed when I told them some of the things <laughs> that I kind of looked at during COVID um, especially in the spring when we were on a a complete like shutdown in our area. Um, a lot of my girls' parents would post things on Facebook um, and I would see those things and be like, hey, they, you know, they did this and their parents took pictures of it or they talked about it and that could be a Cub Scout adventure. And so I would text the mom and say, hey, did you realize that because y'all did family game night that it completes this achievement? Um, I also evaluated things on what my daughter was doing in school and signed those things off as achievements. Um, now, I didn't do that without talking to the parents and saying, hey, FYI, you know, your child probably did this at school. Um, but nothing says that they couldn't do those achievements through school, other activities, or at Scouts. So, so. What I did is I created like what the requirements were for every single rank. And Rob has this, so he can share this with you. Um, and simply what I do when I'm getting ready to do an adventure, let's say I have, you know, more wee blows than I do bears. Um, and I, I want to work on Call of the Wild. So I look at some of the adventures and say, okay, this one is looking at um, weather. Um, and I will do just a, a find for that term, weather, um, and see where it lands in the other programs. And I am gonna see here, give me one second, because I gave, I sent Rob an example of, of what I have been doing. Um, that's probably a much better one than weather since I put that slide up there. So um, playing games. So that was the example that I used with Rob. So playing games was one. So if I look at that in the Lions program, that could be playing games from Lions Honor, the Rumble in the Jungle, or Pick My Path. So three areas that it falls, three adventures that playing a game could, could line up. Um, and Tigers, that could be Games Tigers Play, Tigerific, or Tiger Tag. Um, wolves, that could be running with the pack, paws of skill, adventures and coins, um, coat of the wolf, or even cubs who care. Um, bears, grin and bear it, marble madness, roaring with laughter, and then weeblows and arrow of light, stronger, faster, higher, and then game design. Now, nothing says that you're going to complete every single thing on each of these, but if you can find just that common thread of like, okay, what could I do? If we played games, how many achievements could I, you know, work on for that one? Does anybody use a similar method? Or are you just kind of all over the board right now? 
Um, I use the the uh, in August. Common. Um, it's a guide that I can think of. It's it's Common Connections or something like that, and it says like aquatics, and it'll list out the different badges. Mm -hmm. I use that to go through, and we do like themes, and so yep. um, that's how I do it. And then I have I keep a running list of the badges that we're doing, and yep. so and I try to get it all accomplished that month. Uh, yep. And that's that's kind of what I look at is like okay if I'm you know if I'm working on one particular wand, um, say I'm doing running with a pack with our wolves, um, I will carry that theme over the next month and make sure that I achieve each of the other ranks within that month. So similar hey, concept. Uh, um, my uh, my former committee chair had went through and actually lined out which which adventures line up together mm -hmm. so um not not down to that, that granular level of of uh each component of each adventure but it's on i think the third page of the uh the attachment i just shared in the chat okay um but it it really helped with me it really helped me to Say okay, we're gonna. All, these adventures are, you know, just extensions of each other mm -hmm. for the uh, tigers, lions, and, and bears. So, yep. yeah, kind of the same thing that you're talking about. Just yeah. finding where they overlap. Yeah, where they overlap. So, um, and it does add a little added challenge to to those that have multi rank dens. Um, <laughs> Amy's like, yes, <laughs> yes, it does. Um, it, you know, it's just, again, it's all about doing your best. Um, nothing says it has to be verbatim. It does make, um, if your parents are following along with Scouting app, it makes things a little challenging there. Um, as well as, you know, you looking at the DIN leader experience and checking things off in Scout book and, or the DIN leader experience. And I'm not familiar with how familiar you are with either of those two applications, but we can talk a little bit about those. Um, did I lose? I'm not sure which slide's up there. Oh, I didn't hear you, Rob. <laughs> you're, you're on the front slide. Okay. Slide um, one. Oh, it looks like uh, we, had, we had a new entrant, Karen. Hi, Karen. We won't put you on the spot, but maybe we'll come back to you and find out more about you. But, all right. Um, do you see the scouting app slide? Yes. Okay. Are, are you familiar with scouting app? So a little bit. So the scouting app provides access directly to scout book. And this is a an app that I would tell you to have all your parents download. Um, put it on their phone. It'll tie to your to your pack or to your den. Um, and it's a place that parents can track along what their scout is doing. Um, so it shows them real time um, of what achievements have been completed. It also shows them what requirements that they could do at home. Um, so if they're looking at things, you know, that that possibly they could do um, during the week or on a weekend. Um, and there's so much of what we do as scouts that you're doing as a family anyway, just on fun events um, that people just don't even realize that, oh, because we went to the zoo this weekend, that could be counted as, you know, an achievement. So it gives you some talking points to talk to your kids about. So, um, but I always tell everyone, download that app, get your parents to download it an easy way for them to track where their scouts are at. Um, it also is a great place for you to be able to remind them, hey, if you missed a meeting, no big deal. This is what we did. Check it out on the scouting app. They can sign off on it as a parent. It sends you a notification as a DIN leader, and then you can complete it um, in the DIN leader experience or scout book. So talking about DIN leader experience, who uses it and who doesn't? Or who's at least tried it? 
<laughs> I'm aware of it and haven't and, and are, I'm not using it right now. Hi, buddy. Um, I've been using it for a couple years now since before um, it was a thing. I, I think it's a great app. I will tell you, it, it's still a little tricky. Go with Daddy to the store. Go. Um, yeah, I um, but um, it's better than having to like plan out the whole the whole year of stuff. Um, and what I will normally do, uh, and what I've done for the last two years now, whatever group I have, the majority of girls because I have a girls den. Um, at whatever rank they're at. So last year I had more wolves. So I based everything off of kind of my wolf program. This year it's bears. So we're basing most of everything off of the bear lineup. So I will go into the den leader experience, set up my year's worth of planning based off of that program and then plan around for the other girls around that. So it's a little tweaking for the other programs, but at least I have a baseline. If you've not used it, it's super easy. Um, I love that it takes that whole planning process and just kind of makes it dummy proof and dumps it into a whole year's worth of planning. Um, and you don't have to do a whole lot of thought to it. If your pack is using it, it will put all of your pack activities in there as well, um, which I like. Um, this year's kind of the anomaly because we're not having pack events right now just due to our pack size, we can't. Um, yay, COVID. <laughs> but, um, I have a question, Wendy. Um, yeah. On the Den Later experience as committee chair, I can't see that. Is no. there a... okay. I can give you. I can give you a sandbox version of it, and I'll share that information with Rob if he wants to share that as well, um, yeah. especially for, you know, commissioners or other unit leaders that aren't den leaders that would like to see what it looks like. Um, it's a really neat app um, and definitely makes my planning a whole lot easier and easy to tweak things. So if I find out that we're not having a meeting, I can move things around easily. Well, I think it would be beneficial for like me as pretty much the leader of our pack to be able to push that to our, my den leaders, and if I understand it, then it'll be easier for me to do so. <laughs> but with not being able to see it yet, it's yeah. not having been able to, and you know, explain things to them through it. Yeah, no, I totally get it. So it's interesting when we got ready to plan for the fall with my pack, and I've been telling other leaders about it, like, hey, you should really use this. Um, none of the other den leaders would listen to me <laughs> in my own pack, so I can only imagine what you're dealing with. But they got to complaining about, you know, the time that they were spending on planning out their meetings. And I'm like, why are you not using this? And they're like, well, we're not sure how to use it. And so I literally did like a 10 minute discussion with them. And they're like, oh my goodness, where has this been all my life? <laughs> I'm like, see, I told you, you got to use this. So um, it still has its little flaws here and there, but it's way better than spending eight hours um, versus eight seconds on planning your meetings. And then um, if you are forced to do some virtual meetings or looking for guidance or assistance on some of your adventures, um, there, are, there were about 100 councils that joined in on this kind of crowdsourcing den leader virtual resources. Um, and I can, I will here in a second put this in the chat just so you can click the link. Rob also has this in the, um, and can share this with you as well. Um, but there are adventures from Lions all the way through Arrow of Lights. Um, you could utilize this as, I wouldn't do it as your entire meeting. You could definitely use it as a portion of your meeting. I used um, the Bear Claws adventure with my bears um, a couple of weeks ago, just so that they don't get tired of listening to me um, talk all the time. I used the video to explain nice safety. Um, and just took that little portion. Um, so use these how you want. Some of the videos I will tell you are really good and others, eh, eh. so, but <laughs> use them as you will. So, so what questions do you have? Not a question, but I looked through 
some of those videos and I agree. I, I haven't had the opportunity to use them in a virtual meeting or a live meeting yet, but um, yeah, kudos because those are, I, th I think they're pretty well done for yeah. outsourcing. Yeah, some, I mean, some of them are really good. Like, oh, I could use that as a whole meeting, <laughs> maybe not just a portion of a meeting. So definitely gonna, you know, utilize more of those. But especially if there's a topic that you're not that comfortable with, or how would I do that? Or, hey, I can't go to the fire station right now because they're not allowing people to go to the fire station. Um, those are available, so. Definitely not ideal times with COVID, so. Are there other tips and tricks that people are using? And Matt, I'm gonna, I'm gonna download your, scout your plan and probably use it as a, a resource. <laughs> All right. Well, I know this was short and sweet. This is just, like I said, me as a den leader, what I've done. I appreciate all of you sharing what you're working on and doing. Um, again, just do your best. And um, and the kids, the, as long as the kids are having fun, that's all that's ma that matters. So. Yeah, you know, that's, that's really an excellent point, Wendy. It's, you know, we often as adults, we get so caught up in our own coolness and everything's just got to be just so, so, and, and we never feel like it's good enough. And, you know, kids are zoomed out and they don't want to, none of that is really true. You know, if we're engaging with them at their level and helping them see kind of their next steps and they're having a good time, they don't care if they're looking at a screen or not. They don't care if they're running around in a field or not. As long as they're connecting and they feel like they're important, they matter, they're having a good time, they're going to be engaged, families are going to be happy, everybody's going to have a great time, and, and we're going to be able to carry out Scouting's mission. Yeah. You know, I, in the spring, tried to do a few virtual meetings, um, and I had meetings planned out, um, and they all went by the wayside because all my girls wanted to do was chat with each other. And I felt at that moment that that's what they needed. Um, and so that's what we did. We just gave them time to jump on and to chat and, and do what they needed to. Here's mine. <laughs> so, um, but I didn't lose too many girls. We do have a couple that are doing all virtual, even though we're able to meet in person. So is, is, I feel weird about recruiting right now because I'm I'm comfortable with the, uh, the girls I have in my den right now. And as much as I, I'd love a den of five or eight or up more. Yeah. Like at the same time, I'm, you know, like eh, I don't want to bring randos into. I, I don't know their families through yeah. COVID. I don't know. It is very it is very touchy. Um, I have five girls in my den. Um, at one time, we had 12. Um, two girls moved, um, and a couple other girls decided that they were kind of done um, due to COVID. Um, and then two girls are doing all virtual right now. So, huh? <laughs> we can talk about that later. <laughs> but um, the five girls that I have, um, I've told them if they want to invite friends, they are more than welcome to have friends come. Um, I have not pushed on them real hard. Um, school access is really weird right now um, with a lot of kids either going virtual or going in person. Um, and we did a virtual recruitment event, which didn't go great. Um, so I didn't get any new girls from that, but yeah, I would like to have girls, but I'm also like, if I can maintain what I have right now, that's more important to me than getting more girls. So, and again, it's back to that, do your best thing. <laughs> so, you know, Rob and I, from a, from a um, council and national perspective, yes, we want more kids in the program because that means that more families are doing our program. Um, but we also know that it's reality um 
and it's better to maintain the kids that we have and then gain new kids because we kept a good program for them and they started talking to friends of hey during this whole shutdown I was still able to do scouts so there'll be better recruiters um, coming out of COVID so I get it Matt where are you meeting are you able to meet at your location or so our all the schools in our all the public schools in our area are virtual um, so we're not in our the, the school PTO is our charter organization. The general pack, we have a pretty good sized pack, maybe uh, close to 50. And they're taking over a park, but I'm just not personally comfortable with that. And when I was going through Cub Scouts, it was always meeting at a parent's house. Yeah. So I, I'm having uh, the girls den meet away from the entire pack, which you know, I wish they were all together, but I, I'm not comfortable with it. So they're meeting in my backyard. Um, <laughs> and our first meeting went really well. And, uh, and we we'll have one more Zoom meeting on the schedule. We started the year late, just with trying to organize the pack did. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with the, the tigers and wolf that I have right now. Yeah, well, Matt, I mean, the, saying that Pac 52 can't start another den. Yeah, I mean, the important thing is, is your meeting, um, you're providing the program, whether you started late <laughs> or whether you started on time. So, um, right. who's to say what's late and what's not? Um, especially with the craziness of this fall, of you know, our school's going to be in session, are they not going to be in session? What does that look like? Um, so I commend you for you know getting up and started no matter at what what time that was so um i too have brought um my den to my house so kind of taking it back old school <laughs> um yeah we're we're meeting if it's nice enough outside if we can um if not we're kind of in my living room or at the dining room table so like we were on monday night carving pumpkins at my dining room table so Anyone else like to share like where you're meeting, how things are going, questions, concerns? Um, I can share what we're doing. Um, when COVID happened and we shut down completely, we uh, I moved right to Facebook Live because Zoom wasn't popular yet. Yep. And then we moved into Zoom and we've continued to do Zoom. We, um, while we were in zero, we're in phases. And so we were in zero phase. We were bottom line. Um, we met once at the park because we could mm -hmm. social distance. It was a nice day. Um, but, uh, and then we slowly met a couple different times over the summer, but we've mainly kept it virtual. Um, and it's, I keep my meetings under a half an hour because at about the 15 minute mark, they squirrel really bad. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> I make them all mute their mics, um, unless they're asking a question or we need to do it all, but they have to all mute their mics so that I don't get all of that craziness going on. Yep. And then we've, we just, since our county just moved into phase two, we can start doing more. We're meeting now, um, twice a month in person and we're doing like an activity so this month we went and did a beach cleanup um and so we did an activity and then last night we did our um we had a little ceremony to give out badges and stuff um and we met in person and um families we, we set up our chairs and everybody was like our families were all like you know sitting together but all like apart and <laughs> every time we touch something my husband and I had hand sanitizer and we're cleaning our hands and <laughs> excellent but other than that uh zoom has worked for us we did lose some kids we did have I think 11 originally and we're down to six so we did lose some kids because their families wanted more in person and at the time our county just wouldn't even let us do it so right. I, I was really limited so 
but yeah. Is that yeah, I've, I've continued just to communicate with those that kind of dropped out um, just to let their parents know, hey, these, these are still the things that we're working on if you ever want to like come in. Um, so, and totally based on your comfort level. So I have really told parents, this is up to you. I totally get if you don't want to be involved. I totally get if you like change your mind at some point and want to come just check it out. So um, we did though meet, um, we met a couple of times virtually when we were on really total shutdown, but in June, they kind of lifted a few things and we could have small groups. And so we did a lot of, hey, we're going to the park, but socially distanced, like we're gonna do a family bike ride. So you as a family do the bike ride, you know? <laughs> Um, we did a photo scavenger hunt at a nature park, um, so different things like that until we were able to really kind of come together a little bit more. So, Randy, I saw your hand while ago. Was that just a high five to Amy or do you want to add something? Just, just a high five, quite frankly. <laughs> okay. Amy's, uh, Amy's doing well. I'm really uh, pleased to see that. Good. But I'm sitting here stuffing my face with late dinner, so uh, I'll just kind of <laughs> give it a little bit. <laughs> the math says me too. <laughs> <laughs> I get that one. I'm usually the one, you know, trying to eat on a call too. So, well, this is Jamie. I thought I would like to share a little bit. Um, we've been meeting outdoors. We've tried <laughs> several different locations. Um, We've moved around to find something that will work. Right now we're meeting at a park. There are growing up trees. Um, it, it's been working. We're able to social distance, but now it's getting cold and it's dark earlier. Um, we're on a hunt for an indoor location. We haven't been very successful. Um, we have not tried virtual meetings yet. Um, Maybe we've, we've been pretty successful at meeting every week, once a week. We've only missed two weeks where we did not have a meeting. We had our first day activity um, this past Saturday with a little bit of planning and the parents participating. And, but this pack is new as far as the, all of the kids. So we've grown from two to nine. Um, within the last maybe three months. Yay. So we're just spreading our wings a little bit, trying to figure out how to make it work. It's been fun. The kids have been great. They're learning. We're working on many different things, whether it's a craft or working towards their achievements, or we just had our Pinewood Derby two, three weeks ago, which was a success. It was a lot of fun. I did a um, socially distant Pinewood Derby competition. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of difficult, of course. I, I would have to say that maybe 95% of the parents and children in our pack were wearing masks. But overall, I would say it was 50-50. Um, but we stuck, we sat together as a pack, the, the, the scouts and the parents. So we were pretty far away from everybody else. Um, and we, even when we meet out in the park, we're all wearing our masks. We have a bottle of hand sanitizer, um, you know, everything that we can do to be safe. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing. So interesting how you did the Pineland Derby and <laughs> Our pack has not done a pun and derby. We did do a virtual camp out, um, pack camp out. Um, so each den put together activities. We came to together as a entire pack um, of those scouts that want to participate in a service project for the morning. And we did a, a stretch of trash cleanup along a road. Um, so we were able just to kind of hand out bags and then everybody kind of go their own way. Um, we had probably, I don't know, 30 people show up between scouts and parents, which was the largest I think we've had in a long time. And we have a pack of like almost 100 kids. Um, so success there. But then 
each den had activities during the day um, that they put together and then we did a virtual campfire um, and scouts were able to camp out in their backyards so as a family so it was, it was interesting it was fun um, but what we were able to do So before we sign off, I want to make sure that everybody that's in tonight uh, gets the, the stuff that Wendy was talking about. So if everybody would just take a second and pop your email into the chat. Because as I'm recording this, it's also going to save a text file for me of the, of the chat comments and things. And then I'll make sure that everybody gets that email. I'm, I want to send it out to all of our den leaders across the council. But, you know, I want to make sure that you guys for sure get it. And Larry, you, you jumped in here just a few minutes ago. Why don't you unmute for a second there and, and tell us who you are and where you're from. I don't recognize you. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, my name's Larry Irwin. Uh, I'm, I'm with PAC 413 and I, I just took over the Weebelos. Um, and I, I did dinner and my phone didn't notify me and I looked at the time and I thought, oh no, I missed oh. it. But I thought I'd jump in anyway, just to see if there was, you know, if it was going until seven. Um, but yeah, so, so we, um, you know, we, we have met a few times and we actually um, met at the, the Oregon Trail Council offices this last Tuesday. Um, and we're going on a hike this weekend, but it has been challenging. It uh, it's been really hard to get people to to actually want to commit. Um, the Pinewood Derby would have been great. Nobody wanted to even try this year by doing it online and maybe dropping off cars and stuff. I yeah. It's been a number of packs and a couple of our districts that have done virtual Pinewood Derbies and. It's, you know, drop the things off and set the car down, stuff away, uh, you know, and then they filmed the entire race and people were watching and commenting and, and that was pretty successful. So, well, maybe I can talk them into it. That, that's the whole <laughs> idea because I, I did talk about that because I've, I've watched a lot of the things online trying to get ideas and how to, to make energize people. Um, this year, it's, it's just, I think it's scary for people. Uh, we did uh, one of the end of the woods um, activity for Weebelows. We, we met at a park. The first week, I had two people show up. Um, and we had nine last, last session when we were bears. Um, and then this last time, we had five. So at least, uh, I, I think they're coming out of their shell a little bit, but it's still almost like pulling teeth yeah it is you know i i think just that open line of communication with people of hey we're going to continue to meet and just reminding them week after week that we're still here we're still doing stuff come if you're comfortable if you're not comfortable this is what we worked on um you know just continue to remind them um I had a couple of parents that just never responded to anything and I've been texting them for months and I had a mom finally reach out to me and say, I really appreciate everything that you've been doing, but we're not going to do scouts anymore, which was, you know, kind of a bummer for me, but yeah. um, I just asked her, I said, you know, was there something that I did? And she was like, no, absolutely not. You know, my work schedule has changed and there, you know, I just, I can't get my daughter there and I don't have anybody else to do it. And so she's like, right now we're just going to step out. So, and that was okay. But, um, but don't give up. Keep reminding people that, hey, we're still doing it um, and come if you feel comfortable. So, well, yeah. With our den leaders and folks that we've got on this call, is there anything that we can do for you from the council level to kind of help with programming or help with communicating with parents or, you know, what, what can we do to help you? And you don't have to answer now. You can always call me. <laughs> yeah, feel free to call Rob if you just want to chat about stuff and bounce ideas off of anybody. Or Absolutely. If there's things that we can do from a national perspective, definitely let me know those 
those two. Um, these crowdsourcing videos kind of came from a whole conglomerate of, you know, requests from <laughs> councils and leaders. And so we can put those resources out there. We just need I, to know what you I really need. liked the, uh, the pumpkin carving contest that the, the scout office. And so I, I don't know, just to, something fun that everyone in the, in the council can do together. Um, I think, I don't know, somehow networking, like, I don't have a problem with it with my pack, but I can imagine that there are, are packs that, uh, that don't have a lot of meetings, so, or that aren't meeting a lot. So if there's individual people that are still energized, I, I don't know if it, if they're out there or if the council can reach out to them, but, um, or just, just a way to feel more connected. Like there's no, there's no big camp outs. So what, what could the council do to have a whole council wide, um, program where everyone sees each other in a huge thousand person zoom call without it turning into Lord of the Flies. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just something to feel more connected because that's when, when everyone's behind the camera, I think the kids want to see that right now or want to want to feel that right now. But, um, and nationally, uh, I really appreciate this opportunity. So keep them coming. <laughs> well, I'll also throw a plug in for the ongoing series of webinars that uh, the National Council is putting out. Most of them are focused on cub program packs, recruiting, getting the word out there, keeping families engaged. They're doing a lot right now on retaining those families. I, you know, a lot of great information on communication. Michael Ramsey usually hosts those. He's a great presenter, uh, well worth the time. And they're all recorded as well. So if you don't manage to see one live, it's okay. You can you can see it recorded, and I we we keep sending that information out, and I'll send that out as as part of the resources from that again as well. Yeah. And roundtable, hit roundtable, roundtable for our council first Tuesday of the month, uh, online. So you don't even have to leave your home. And the team, our our commissioners that are doing roundtable are doing a fantastic job. The Cub Breakouts are great. And we've actually got two Cub Breakouts now, one for Den Leaders and Cub Masters and one specifically for Weeblos Leaders because the program is so different. So lots of great stuff to, to connect with there too and see people in the district and all that good stuff and across our council. So yeah, a lot of stuff going on. It's just getting people to, to grab onto it and engage and do it. Yeah. And, I'll and we've had the two council with the uh, Scout Saturday and then the uh, Haunted Trails. So there's a couple of uh, late breaking council events that are out there for, uh, uh, for cubbies. Um, it's a matter of taking advantage of them, quite frankly. Great. I hope that uh, enough information is getting out that uh, den leaders know that these things are, are occurring. There's been a lot, of, a lot of work by the professionals and the volunteers to make this come together. Just on those on those webinars, you know, Michael Ramsey, even though he's from the national office and he hosts those, we are actually going out and finding den leaders and having them as the panel. So they're telling us from their perspective of, of what's worked and what hasn't worked. So it's nice to always know that it's not always just the national face person that's out there. True den leaders just like you. So um, and before we sign off again, I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for making scouting happen. Um, and do your best. Wendy, thank you so much for taking your time. And Cindy, thanks for joining us all the way from Texas. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and you know, everybody tuning in, I, you know, please make sure that, that you get those emails for me. I'm looking here. Thank you for doing that. I'm, my, my plan is to kind of compile all the stuff, get the video edited down and, and loaded and I'll send out a, a, an email probably tomorrow with links to some of the things that Wendy talked about tonight. I make sure that we include her, her PowerPoint presentation and her 
uh, Excel guide and, and all the good stuff and jotted down a bunch of other things too. And I'll probably send it to you, Wendy, so that you can say, no, Rob, you forgot this one. And yeah, and don't forget to add Matt's presentation thing in there yeah, too. Absolutely. So I think that may be good. Absolutely. So, thank right. you so much. As a new DEN leader, it's nice to have resources. I feel like I'm starting from ground zero. Thank you, you guys. Good night. Yep. Good night, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Thank you.